I'm here now with Kieran Holloway, sales manager with Nesty Limited. And we're at the Plowing Championships and I'm standing in front of a gorgeous purple something that I believe is called a Bonya Bot. So tell me all about it. Yeah, it's a milk vending machine. Um, basically is able for the farmer to sell the milk directly to the public. Okay. rather than to the creamery, so they multiply the income that they're getting from their milk, same product. Okay. And this particular machine is a double machine, so two people can get their milk at the same time. It also has the option to get um, milk flavours added to the milk, which okay. are really popular. That's very um, cool. Kids love it. Yeah. You get 40, 50% of your sales actually with flavoured milks. Okay. You know, and so you can have four flavours in that machine, four flavours in this machine, okay. mix them up. You know, you have maybe flavour of the week, and different flavors that will come and go. So it's just, it's very, very customer friendly, shall we say, machine. So someone will hypothetically come along, uh, is it tap 150 or wh whatever it is and put yeah. their bottle in? You can basically, you can have these as fully cashless okay. or as this particular one, this one takes coins as well. Okay. So you can make the choice when you're buying the machine. And basically what people will do, if you come along and say, well, I want to get four or five liters of milk and yeah. say, okay, well, I'll put the tap my card, put the credit on the machine, and then basically you can open the door here okay. and you just get your bottle in here and wow. your, your syrup or your milk, you press the button that you wish to come out and it'll dispense into your bottle. Okay, and wow. Then it'll be, uh, just take it out, you, whatever credit is left on the machine, just, okay, now we go again, another bottle and so on. Okay. And you can spread it over 10 bottles if you want to. Okay. And you know, a lot of the things people actually like, they'll, they can buy their own glass bottles. You get like the farm will get their own logo and okay. their um, business details printed on the bottle. That's and interesting so, actually because they're glass bottles yeah, and yeah. there's a sustainability piece there Big I suppose time. with yeah. getting your bottle, you pay for the bottle one time, you bring it home, you wash it yourself, you bring it back mm -hmm. and there's, you know, there's more sustainable, I know you can recycle milk cartons and so on and so forth but you are not creating waste with this one glass bottle. And that, people love actually getting away from the plastics yeah. and getting that out of the food chain as much as possible. Totally, yeah. And the whole sustainability is a real big thing, not just for the farmer, but for people actually buying this as well. They're kind of very much into the, the low road miles. There, there's zero road miles in this. Yeah. Whereas your milk in the shop's going up to the north and come back down and still has a shelf life of 10 days on it. Yeah. You know, yeah. this is fresh milk. You know, today's milk today really is what it is. Okay. And so if you'll buy that, it's a, a premium price they'll pay for it. Mm -hmm. You know, people probably spend 160, 170, 180 per liter of milk. Okay. What they, and then extra another 50 cents, maybe a euro for a shot of syrup. Yeah. So the farmer's now getting maybe 230, 40, 50 a cent per liter of milk rather okay. than what they get from the creamery now, maybe 60 cents. Okay, yeah, and I suppose, what way would this work then? Do do supermarkets buy this? Do farmers buy this? Do farm shops buy this? So, or is it a variety? Is it everyone? It's primarily the farmer. Okay. You know, and that's really kind of what people like to buy into coming to the farm. Yeah. You know, if it's in a half decent location, people will go to these. You know, they'll drive 15, 20 minutes, not a problem. And you can have your milk, but then you'll also maybe have you evolve into other products. It could be okay. vegetables, meat. Um, your neighbor's produce, it could be little community, mini farm wow, shop. Okay. You know, so you kind of put it into these pods which are kind of just landed down if people don't have the buildings to do it themselves. Yeah. So it's a very cost effective way of doing it and very quick okay. and your shop is up and running to go. And I suppose you mentioned there that kind of community piece, you know, I might sell my neighbor's vegetables and my milk and someone else's eggs and so on and so forth mm -hmm. and that kind of supporting local community driven enterprise that's become really popular. And I think COVID played a role yeah. in that. Did you see yeah. kind of any consumer trends in COVID? And Oh yeah, I mean, people definitely wanted to support local jobs, local businesses. Yeah. And they didn't really want to be going out too far either. Yeah. You know, so the people, I think, became more aware as to what businesses were near them. Yeah. And they didn't have to be going away. And actually, well, you know, so-and-so down the road has this produce that actually tastes really good because this is all pasteurized milk, okay. but not homogenized. Okay. Okay, so farmers, we can sell them pasteurizer as well. We can kind of give them the whole, everything they want to do. We are a one-stop shop okay. for somebody who wants to go into the milk vending business. But the whole thing with the sustainability and buying local, supporting local jobs, that became really, really big in COVID. And people okay. stuck with that. And they kind of appreciate, you know, the, yeah, the, the, they're friends, you know, with these people as well. Yeah, know? it's a sense of community and stuff. And I suppose, did you, I'm not sure if these were available in COVID. Did you see many of them go out? It kind of started really that because okay. there, there is a lead in time with this. You have to kind of, of get your, maybe you have to get planning permission. You have to get department approval. Yeah. You know, and there's a lead time in these machines now. They have got popular. They used to be a six week lead time. Now it's three and a half months. So you're seeing good it's, demand. It's more and more demand because okay. the economics, you know, you, you can sell your milk for 230 to 240 yeah. litre rather than 60 cents. 
you know, it makes sense. I big mean, difference. It's a good way to diversify income yeah. and kind of boost your business right on site. And it's also a very good way for families if they're kind of, you know, maybe parents are getting a bit older. You, kind of, you yeah. can hive off the milk business into a limited company and maybe yeah. the son or the daughter is taking over the farm. And yeah. so it helps in succession as well. It's always very clear. You know, yeah. everybody knows what they have and, you know, it's a really the, the parents aren't getting in the way. Yeah, I know. You know but they're, they're still, you know, they, they don't want to be kind of just discarded. You know, this is no. a lovely business for people. It's very social. Yes. You know, and yeah. there's a nice kind of people that come to buy these type of foods yeah. and the quality products. So it all works very well for a family. Okay, so it's, it's you're supporting local. It's good social interaction and uh, it's fresh and it's tasty. Yeah. So are you hoping to get a lot out of Ploughing 2022? You're here for the entire event? We certainly are, yeah. Okay, um, great. Like I say, we have the, the milk vending machines. We have other vending machines that will be part of a farm shop. We have our pods. We do the solar that we want to power everything by. Wow, okay, so everything. We have a whole lot of stuff here. So come on down, see us. Nesty, here we are. Great. Okay, well, thank you so much, Kieran. There's everything here, and it was great to chat to you. Likewise, Thanks. thank you. Thank you.